Yeah, I mean, Amos Doss changed the game. And uh, that's actually the team you joined, the Amos Doss team. And I think you joined before Windows 95 yeah. was released. Uh, so tell me about the story of Amos Doss. It's uh, success of Amos Doss was probably pivotal to the success of Microsoft. Yeah, before DOS, they were largely a language company. So they had made BASIC for a lot of computers, and they had a Fortran compiler and a Pascal compiler, that kind of thing. But their deal to have MS-DOS included with every version of, or every instance of the PC effectively set them as a standard that they were able to, le able to leverage for decades going forward. And to a certain extent, they lucked into that. And on, a, on the other hand, they were smart to have done it. So, because they didn't charge at IBM a lot of money for it, but making it a standard really played out to their advantage over time. Uh, so at that time, MS-DOS, no graphical interface. Can you just speak to what the heck MS-DOS is? It's largely a command launcher. So you type in a name of a command, it looks up to see if that's in the current directory or on a special path of folders, and it loads it into memory and executes it if it's there. And that's 90% of what MS-DOS does. Now it has environment variables and some complexity and a small scripting language built in, but it is basically just an operating system shell that allows you to uh, use the resources of the computer, like the hard drive or the CPU, and it doesn't allow you to multitask. There's no graphical interface. Now, Microsoft did a, add a text-based graphical interface for things like an editor and Quick Basic in DOS 5, I believe, and there was a DOS shell, which was sort of a graphical file manager in MS-DOS 4. So they experimented with it, but it's largely a command prompt. Does it have ability to communicate with uh, external devices, so drivers and all that kind of stuff? Like how expansive of an operating system was MS-DOS? Well, it was limited by the original x86 instruction set, which limited it to 640K. And then right. there were various band-aids on top of that to do high mem and then extended memory beyond that. And uh, a lot of hoops have to be jumped through to make anything work without consuming base RAM. Yeah, I mean, you so you programmed on MS DOS. What, what's it like? What are some interesting details there? Like you said, there's the memory constraints of 640 uh, kilobytes. Yeah, 640K is the maximum that's ever going to be available. So it's not what's available to you as an operating system developer because whatever you use is what the user won't get. So if you use 10K needlessly, you're going to, every machine in the world now has 10K less. So that's kind of a big responsibility. Is that a true quote from Bill Gates where he said, Nobody will ever need more than 640K. Yeah, yeah it, no, it's not him. Okay. It's been All attributed right. to him, but not real. Uh, okay, so I mean, w what are some interesting aspects that, we, that you were able to do as an intern and when you joined on MS-DOS and beyond? One of the first things I did was to take Smart Drive, the disk cache, because I had familiarity with disk caches, mm -hmm. and to add CD-ROM caching to it, because I was new. Mm -hmm. CD-ROMs were just, just coming out. Microsoft Bookshelf was one of the few products you could run for it. And as you can imagine, caching a CD speeds it up by dozens of times if you're smart about it. So it, it was a big performance win and a nice thing to work on. Um, a bigger part of that was moving a bunch of smart drive and eventually the double space compression engine up into what's known as high memory. Mm -hmm. And without rat holing on the technical aspect of it, on the x86, there's something I believe called the A20 line. And I probably have this backwards or I got a 50-50 shot at it. But if you've got the A20 line asserted, then your memory pointers wrap at the one megabyte mark. Mm -hmm. And if not, they don't. So you continue going up in memory. So you can rewrite memory above by combining your segment and offset registers to a number bigger than one megabyte, and you get an extra 64K. And you put your code in there, and then you just put stubs to jump to it from low memory. And so you can get another 64K out of the machine that way. And we did that for a couple of the products. And that's, I had no idea what high mem was because I was an Amiga programmer, and I'd never written any x86 code before I got there. So... So that was like a cool optimization that you got to be a part of. Yeah. 